Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. A Mother's Shelter Episode 4 Chapter 26 We wake up at 7 a.m., and Molly is still sleeping. Jack has to be at his office in the pack house for 8 a.m. but he's going to come back at 9.30 to pick Molly and me up to show us around. I have more time than he does to get ready, so I get out of bed, and put on a robe that is thigh length. I grab the baby monitor and head downstairs to make Jack breakfast. I decided to make French toast, bacon, and I put out raspberries and whipped cream. Jack comes down as I'm finishing up. He's wearing dress pants, a pinstripe dress shirt, and a tie. You look handsome. He looks darn right edible, honestly. He smiles mischievously, as he stalks towards me and desire floods me. I'm starving. He confesses. Breakfast is ready, I smile, suppressing the dirty thoughts that were flooding my mind. I'm not starving for breakfast, he rasps and I feel the need intensify deep inside of me and my skin prickles with anticipation. What are you starving for, I ask breathlessly, as he walks closer to me. You, he whispers, my robe falls open, and he looks over my body. MMM, he hums, as his hands slide inside, and his hands grasp me, as he pulls me in closer to him. Then his lips find mine. Not only am I feeling weak in the knees, I also feel completely lost in his touch, and the intensity of his kiss. I feel the want and desire he has for me, and it makes me want him to bend me over this counter. I'm startled out of our passionate kiss by the sound of a knock. Our heads snap to the back door where the sound came from. At the glass patio door stands a man and he's staring at us. I squeal and push my body into Jack's so he can shield me while I retie my robe up. He didn't see anything, thankfully, because Jack's large body was shielding mine. I didn't think they would be here this soon. It's a good thing he didn't knock two minutes from now, because I would have had you sprawled out on the counter, devouring you, he admits, and I feel my cheeks burn pink. His words were so forward. I clear my throat, go answer the door, he's waiting, I smirk. I get breakfast on the table, and Jack soon comes back inside a few minutes later. What was that about? I was going to build Molly's sandbox myself, but when I was catching up on some work last night, I realized how behind I was. I didn't want to keep her waiting, so I called my guys. He wanted to know where and how big I wanted it. They're going to rip up some grass and dig, and then they'll do some nice brickwork around it. I see this is a luxury sandbox, not the typical red plastic crab ones, I smirk. I want her to have a big sandbox, so if she has friends over, or siblings, there's lots of room for everyone, he explains. You're a good dad, I beam and reach over to give him a kiss. We eat breakfast and then he heads to his office at the pack house. Molly is still sleeping, so I head upstairs to check on her to make sure she wasn't sick, and didn't have a fever. She never sleeps this late. She's fine, she just must have had a long day, and maybe her new big girl bed is more comfortable. I decide to go and get ready while I wait for her to wake up. I'm going to be meeting a lot of his pack, so I want to make a good first impression. I don't want to be in sweats, but I also don't want to seem snobby. What to wear? Hmm. I decided to go with some black skinny jeans, with a white and black striped t-shirt. I add a three-fourths length black blazer, that's loose, and not too form-fitting and I add some nude flats. Before I get a chance to do my hair and makeup, Molly wakes up. I finish getting us ready, and Molly fed. Molly and I sit on the floor in the living room while we wait for Jack. 
I'm doing meal planning for the week, while also pretending to eat the food Molly is making for me with her toy picnic basket. I'm pretty nervous about meeting Jack's pack, so I'm trying to keep busy. When Jack comes in, he comes to greet Molly and get a hug from her first. What are you doing, babe? he asks. I'm just meal planning for the week. Why? Because it can be overwhelming to decide every day what to make. If I plan it out once a week, it's so much easier. You're going to cook every day. He asks, in shock. Yeah, I just mean it's a lot of work. My mom never cooked, and I don't, so that just seems overwhelming, he admits. I like cooking, and I'm used to doing it. Plus, the smell of home-cooked meals, and the leftovers, and the togetherness of it all is just another thing that makes a house a home, I add, and he smiles. This house has never felt more like a home than it does with you both here, he says and leans in to give me a kiss. Cross out at least once a week, and we'll go out for dinner as a family. That sounds nice, I agree, and scratch out Friday. Ready to go? Jack asks. I take a deep breath, as ready as I'll ever be. He chuckles, Lexi, they'll love you, not to mention our warriors will respect out of you. Jack grabs Molly and puts her on his shoulders, which she loves. The first place we go is the pack house. When Jack opens the door for us, I see a huge grand staircase, and I can see the two floors of banisters above and a massive sparkly chandelier. To the right there are two grand doors. Jack opens them to show me the ballroom. It is huge, with marble floors and beautiful chandeliers. No one is in there, and there isn't any furniture. This is the ballroom, it's basically always empty, unless we have an event happening, he explains. Then he shows me the massive cafeteria, they have muffins, bagels, fruits, cereal stuff like that here for breakfast, and then, there are always pre-made sandwiches, fruit and salads, cookies and stuff like that for lunch. Everyone in the pack is welcome to come and eat. There are ten fridges always stocked, a dozen microwaves, a bunch of stoves. Anyone living here makes their own dinner. About 100 people live here in the pack house. It's only single adult wolves, or young couples living here. Except for my parents. They have half of the top floor. It's basically a four-bedroom condo, he explains. I'm feeling pretty good so far, but I haven't seen anyone yet. Probably because of the time, everyone is busy with their jobs. Jack shows me the public washrooms and then takes me to the basement, which also has public bathrooms, and a large theater room with tiered seating. There are three industrial-style fridges filled with drinks, and there are three popcorn machines on a counter next to the fridges. Looks fun. I admit. Cold Moon didn't have anything like this. The other half of the basement is bedrooms. The second floor was all bedrooms for pack members as well. The third level has Jack's office, his parents' apartment, and seven large guest suites for when alphas or high-ranking officials come to visit. Jack takes me to his parents' door, he knocks and then walks in. Mom, Dad, he hollers. His mom comes scurrying out. Claire's hair is perfectly styled and she's dressed in a skirt suit. Oh, hello, she says, with a small smile. Then Jack's dad comes out from a different room. Oh it's nice seeing you again Lexi. And Molly too, of course, he says, and I can tell he means it. He hugs me and then moves to Jack, holding Molly, hi Molly. He says in a softer voice. Uh, thanks dad, Jack teases, pointing out that his dad ignored him. Come sit. Would you like a coffee or tea or something, he offers. We don't have a lot of time. I'm showing Lex around, 
and I want to introduce her to all the warriors at their training session in a half hour, Jack explains. You'll have to come back for a nice visit, get to know you both better, Tom smiles and I smile and nod. Oh. Tom points to me and then he looks to Jack. You both marked each other, he says grinning ear to ear. Congratulations, you two. Son, I'm so happy it worked out for you. Thanks, Dad, me too. Jack smiles. That was quick, Claire adds calmly. Maybe she's just not easily excitable? It didn't feel that quick, Jack admits. So does that mean, you're Molly's dad now? I can't help that I'm beaming just at the mention of Jack being Molly's dad. And when I look at Jack, he's beaming too, and we both nod to his father's question. I guess another congratulation is in order. I'm proud of you, son. Tom admits. So. I'm a grandpa. Tom asks hesitantly. If you want to be, we would love it if you both were her grandparents, I offer. Tom's smile gets very bright, while Claire smiles but it isn't so wide. Well, what will she call me, he asks. Whatever you want, I chuckle and he pauses to think. Hmm. I think I like Gramps, what about you dear? He asks Claire. Maybe just Grandma, she says with uncertainty. You should be a Granny or Gran, Tom suggested. Granny sounds far too old. Maybe Gran is fine. It sounds younger than Grandma, she settles. Molly, can you say Gramps? I ask her. Gwumps, she says. And Tom is so delighted. Come with Gramps, Molly. Let's go find a treat for you, he tells her. Dad, it's 10 am, Jack reminds him. Babe, that's what grandparents do. I smile to Jack as I reach for his hand. Thank you, Lexi. Tom adds, feeling vindicated, and he takes Molly's hand, heading into the kitchen. As long as you're fine with it, Jack shrugs. Tom comes back and Molly is walking beside him and she has a gummy worm in each hand, and one is already making its way into her mouth. Did you say thank you to Gramps, Molly? I ask. Thank you. We sit and chat for ten more minutes before we head back out. Tom tells us to introduce Molly as our daughter to everyone we meet today. They'll be too afraid to question you to your face, Jack, and they'll accept it. There will be some talk behind your back about it, but the consensus will be that you have taken Molly on as your own. Then we'll have our top officials pushing the information that you wouldn't take anyone who ever treated her as less than so. That's a great idea. I also like that I'm not lying to anyone, Jack nods. Thank you, Tom I say tenderly. Chapter 27 It's almost time for the warrior's training class so we head straight there. The building is huge and there are two front doors. Jack points to one door, that's the gym if you want to go to work out. This is the training grounds he says as he opens the other door. I walk in, and it's huge and it's full of people, both men and women. When they notice Jack walk in, everyone quiets down and stands watching us. Jack walks to the center of the room with Molly in one arm, and his other hand on my back. I am so nervous. One day I'm supposed to be there Luna. That's a lot of pressure and the last thing I want to do is disappoint them. When I see Zack, I feel a little relieved to see a familiar face. He nods with a big smile, and I wave in return. Good morning everyone. I'm not sure if everyone knows why I have been away the last few days, but I have found my mate at the cold moon ceremony over the weekend, and he's cut off by the clapping of his pack members. I can't help but smile. I look up to Jack, and he's looking at me with pride. It must feel good that his pack cares about his happiness so much. 
he looks back out to the crowd, and they soon quiet down. This is Lexi, my mate. Some of my advanced warriors will recognize her from game day over the weekend. For those of you that weren't there, my lovely mate came in first place for both of the women's races and also the warrior fights, I look at Jack, and he's beaming. I'm probably a little rosy-cheeked because of the high praise introduction, and soon everyone is clapping again. I give everyone an appreciative smile and nod, hoping that will make them stop. When they quiet down, Jack continues, on top of her impressive game day achievements, she is also kind and thoughtful and I know she'll be a great Luna. I also want to introduce you to Molly. Molly is our daughter, and I know you all will do a great job of making them feel welcome, and treat them with nothing but kindness and respect, he finishes. He kinda said the last part in a threatening way. He's looking a little scary, so I start to rub circles on his back to calm him. It seems to have worked because he looks at me and smiles. When he smiles, it's like you can hear an audible sigh of relief throughout the whole room. That's all, he adds. Everyone starts to scatter. Zack comes up to us. You nearly scared everyone half to death there, Jack, he chuckles, but Jack is stone-faced. Good, he states and I move into him, giving him a little hug. Down, Molly says with a wiggle. Jack puts her down and she makes her way to a thick blue mat. I would let Molly jump on one at Cold Moon's warrior building once in a while when I'd swing by for something with her. I follow her, making sure she doesn't get in anyone's way. When she makes it to the corner where the thick mat is, I lift her and put her on top. No one is using it, so she isn't interrupting. She's jumping her little heart out. Her feet are barely even coming off the mat when she jumps, but she loves it. She's laughing, and when she loses her balance and falls she says fall down. I'm watching her, and a woman that I don't recognize comes up to talk to me. She has her red hair tied back, and she has freckles. We have a similar body type, but she's just a bit taller than I am. She's very beautiful, in a very earthy, natural way. Hi, I'm Brit, she says, and extends her hand, and I shake it. Hi, it's nice to meet you. I just wanted to say welcome to Black Moon, I'm really happy we're getting another strong female warrior, she says proudly. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. I'm really excited to get to know all of you and train with you all as well. Me too. She looks at Molly, that laugh though, I mean she's seriously adorable, she gushes. Thank you. After chatting for a few minutes, Jack walks up to us. See, I told you she'd like a trampoline, Jack says, feeling proud of himself. Alpha, Brit says with a nod. Brit, he nods. I'll see you around, Luna, Brit says, and then turns. Just call me Lexi, I add as she's walking away. She turns back to smile and nod. Jack and I leave and continue our tour. Now we're heading to the child care center. In this pack, they have their own building. When it's in sight, I see the chain link fence all around it. There's a sandy area with a play structure, and a bunch of outdoor toys. This is awesome. They have an outdoor play area. Jack smiles, pleased to see me happy. We go inside and there are around 10 women and about 30 little kids. They have a lot more little kids than Cold Moon too. Jack introduces us as his mate and daughter. I see the confused looks he's getting but we just ignore it. The women seem really nice and warm. I feel comfortable with the idea of leaving Molly here when I have training. Then Jack takes me to another building close to the pack house. It's the rec hall. It has pool tables, football tables, air hockey tables and chairs, a bar area, and a few large TVs against the wall. 
We don't stock booze in here unless we're having a party or if in the evenings people want to come, they bring their own, just because this place gets a lot of traffic from the kids too, he explains. It's empty now, but I'm sure after school lets out, this place is pretty popular. Then he shows me the hospital, the convenience store, and the big playground and the splash pad. The splash pad is turned off, given that it's still chilly in April, but I know Molly will have a lot of fun there when it's all set up. The tour is done, so I decide to let Molly play at the park before I head home. I know you have a lot of work to catch up on, babe. I'll stay here with Mole so she can burn some energy. You can get back to work. He looks at his watch, I want to talk to you about your Luna ceremony first. I really don't want to have this talk. I'm not ready to be Luna. Plus, it just seems wrong, I barely know anybody here. Your face just looked like you were in physical pain when I mentioned the Luna ceremony, he confesses. Sorry, what did you want to say? I ask with a chuckle. He pauses. I want to start planning your Luna ceremony. For when, exactly? Not this Friday, next Friday, so ten days. What? How about in a few months? Even a few months seems too soon to me, I plead. He shakes his head. Lexi, you're my marked mate, that I now share a child with. I wanted to do it this Friday, but I thought ten days would be more to your liking, he tells me plainly. I start to groan. It's too soon. Six weeks. I ask in my sweetest voice. He seems totally unfazed by my attempts and just smiles and shakes his head no. Five weeks? Please. I whine. Seventeen days. That's the most I'll agree to. Two and one half weeks. Even saying it out loud, I hate the idea of waiting that long. I want you in your rightful place, beside me, he adds as he pulls me closer. I'm still beside you, you're my mate. A title can't change that, I assure him. To us, it doesn't. It's everyone else I'm worried about. If you're not there Luna, they'll think they can talk to you, or treat you as less. Like we're not a team, and like I won't tear them to shreds if they fk with you, he booms, and I chuckle. I think it's sweet how he's getting all fired up at just the thought of someone not treating me well. I love you. You made it quite clear earlier that Molly and I are to be treated well. You don't have to worry. Plus, I could kick every she-wolf in there, I tease and now he's chuckling. Yeah, you could. He admits proudly as he pulls me in to kiss me. Seventeen days he says as he pulls away, and then says goodbye to Molly. Molly and I spent the day together, and I haven't seen Jack since the park earlier, although he has texted me a few times. He had to go into town for business earlier. Molly and I are making a cinnamon swirl cake with vanilla frosting before we get started on dinner. Molly likes to help me bake all the time. I love this time with her. Buzz buzz I grab my phone. Jack. Chapter 28 The last two weeks have been pretty great. I took a week off before starting to train with the Warriors. I wanted to let Molly get settled, and I also wanted to go to the daycare with her for a few mornings, so she would be comfortable when I left her there. I've been training with the Warriors for a week now, and I really enjoy it. I'm getting along with almost everyone, but I seem to really click with Beska. She was rated third before I got here. It's exciting to train with all new warriors. I also love the advanced warriors class, because it's for advanced men and women, and Jack leads it. He's the strongest wolf I've ever seen. I thought Jet was unbeatable, but Jack would hoop. It's impressive. I've actually been learning a lot from him, 
and he's super while he's in full alpha training mode. A little too sometimes. I had a little moment with one of the she-wolves yesterday. She was looking at him like he was a delicious dessert. And he totally is, but he's my delicious dessert. Her eyes were black with lust, and she was shamelessly licking her lips. I may have embarrassed her a little. Or a lot when I growled at her in front of the whole class to, watch your eye. I made everyone uncomfortable, except Jack. He just wore a smirk. He thinks it's cute when I get all jealous, but she didn't. She was scared, and she apologized right away. And in training today, she was completely professional, and I didn't see her eyes swirling with black from lust. He's mated, and it is so disrespectful for her to conduct herself like that. We just finished the final class of the day, and it was the advanced class. Good work, babe. Jack smiles, as he walks up while I was chatting with Beska, and pulls me close. Thanks. Right back at ye. I say as I lean in to give him a little kiss. Alex walks up to us and snakes his arm around Beska. Alex is the top warrior here, and he's mated to Beska. I really like Alex, he's super funny and always cracking jokes. Alex is tall and muscular, with light brown shaggy hair. Beska has the most beautiful auburn hair, and green eyes. She's easygoing, and she is a genuinely kind and sweet person. We were fast friends. She and Alex actually have a three-year-old little boy, Toby, so it's great that we can get together in the afternoons for playdates. Ready to go, babe? We don't want to be late, Alex says to Beska. Yes, definitely. We'll see you guys later. I'll text you after and maybe we'll take the kids to the park after nap time. Beska asks. Sounds great. I agree. I only train mornings, just like at cold moon. Molly is young, and it's important to me to have afternoons with her. Most warriors train in the mornings, and then also do shifts keeping guard of the pack lands, or the advanced warriors give personal training lessons to other warriors. All of which we would get paid for, but because of my savings from my parents, I've had the luxury of only working mornings. I had a talk with Jack about how I would use my savings to supplement my not working in the afternoon, but he basically laughed at me. He said that since I'm his woman, and also soon to be Luna, money will never be an issue. He told me to work as little or as much as I want. I talked to Jack about not wanting to be financially dependent on him, and I mentioned my savings and how I wanted to contribute, but he insisted that, as Luna, I would be contributing in many ways for many people. He gave me a black credit card and insisted if I purchased anything I use it instead of my savings. I feel grateful that I am still able to have my afternoons with Molly, and that Jack was so supportive. It's 11.30. What do you think about letting Molly have her nap at daycare today and we can shift and go for a run, he asks. I could really use a run, I admit. We've been running through the forest for the last 30 minutes, zigzagging, and I tackle him any chance I get. We're having so much fun. We did this last week too, and it felt really good. It felt like we connected on such a deeper level. We're both black wolves, but my fur is a little longer than Jack's, and Jack is much bigger than I am. He's huge. My eyes are blue, and his eyes are green. His green eyes stand out so much against his black fur, he's beautiful. We're coming up to a creek and we walk side by side so close, we're touching. Even in wolf form, his body touching mine feels so nice. He makes me feel so safe, secure and loved. Not to mention the sparks, and his scent makes me want to ravish him any chance I get. Jack mind links me after we get a drink. There is something I want to show you. Follow me I follow him. 
Ever since we marked each other, I can mind link him. I can't mind link anyone else from his pack yet, not until the Luna ceremony in a few days. I'm still technically a member of the Cold Moon. We walk for a few minutes before coming up to a clearing in the forest. There, I see blankets and pillows, with a beautiful canopy on top. What the heck? As I get closer, I can see it looks so plush and comfy, and there is champagne, a picnic basket, and there are light pink and white flowers everywhere decorating the romantic getaway. Jack shifts and grabs an outfit that was placed there. He grabs a light pink summer dress that I've never seen before and hands it to me when I shift. What's going on here? I ask as I slip the dress on, and look at every beautiful detail. I just wanted to do something nice, he states and pulls me close. This is so sweet, I gush, as I give my maid a grateful, passionate kiss. Thank you. I whisper in between kisses. After we break apart, Jack and I sit down, and he opens the champagne and pours us a glass. When I see what he's packed for us, I'm very excited. There is an amazing charcuterie board, fresh bread, an amazing fruit platter, and also a beautiful dish of different desserts. This is the best picnic ever. I admit excitedly. We eat and talk. Jack wanted to discuss some details about the Luna ceremony. I didn't want anything big, just our pack and Jack hesitantly agreed. I know I said that it could just be our pack for the Luna ceremony, but I did invite a few members from outside ours, he admits. Oh no. How many? I groan. Five oh, okay, that's not bad. Who are they? Your family. Lef, Grace, Jet, Joss, and Cora, he smiles. Mila and Eli couldn't make it, he adds. Really? I'm grateful to hear they're coming. I miss them. I didn't think it would be appropriate to invite only a few members from one pack, and I'd prefer to have them not come than to have to invite everyone. Isn't that going to upset other packs? Nah. They're from your old pack. If anyone gets mad, I'll take care of it, he smiles, and I can't help but smile back. When we're done eating, Jack moves the food off the blankets, and we lay down together, to cuddle. I've been really struggling with something, he tells me. I hate to hear him say that. I immediately find myself leaning on my elbow to sit up a little to look at him. What's wrong? I press. It's about the Luna ceremony. I've been thinking about how I'll introduce you and I hate it. I furrow my brows in confusion. I'll be naming you Luna Alexandria Smith. Yet. Yeah. I question. He shakes his head with disappointment. I feel like it just makes us sound so uncommitted. I was thinking. Luna Alexandria Lavard. What do you think? He asks, plainly. Uh huh. I don't know how to answer that. What is he even saying? Is he asking? He seems to have read my mind. I love you, Lexi. I know that we haven't been together that long, but you and Molly are everything to me. I would give anything and everything for you both. I can't live without you. I crave having every bit of you. I want you to be bound to me for life, not only through the mate bond but also through marriage. I want you to carry my name, and one day carry our pups. Be my wife. Marry me, he asks. One of his hands is on my face, as his thumb lightly strokes my cheek. His other hand snakes under the blanket and pulls out a small box. He places the open box in front of me and I see a large oval diamond ring, with small diamonds that wrap around it. The band is thin, dainty white gold. Oh my gosh, really? For some reason, I'm immediately crying. He smiles and nods. 
I smile and nod back. Yes. I whisper before our lips meet. He kisses me, and I feel the sparks are erupting on my skin. This is pure bliss. Jack pulls away and then puts the ring on me. As soon as the ring was on my finger, I move in to kiss him. My need for my mate is all-consuming. Our kiss becomes heated very quickly. I love the way he tastes. I'm on top of him, and he's starting to unzip my dress. It doesn't take long before we were both naked and filling the quiet forest with the sounds of our lovemaking. Chapter 29 Jack's point of view we lay, enjoying this moment together. So, what are your thoughts on getting married? I ask. Well, I said yes, didn't I? She smirks. I mean what do you want? I know women can have certain expectations about their wedding day, so I want to know what you want. I know I mentioned that I wanted your last name to be Lavard when you have your Luna ceremony, but that's in two days. I know that is completely unrealistic. I'll settle for introducing you as my fiancé. I just want you to have whatever makes you happy, I explained to her well, I guess growing up, I had this vision of this big special day, but my life isn't what I thought it would be, and I'm not the same person I was then. My parents won't be there. I was a single mother, long before I was mated. I don't know. I guess life changes things sometimes. What have you always wanted? She rebuts. I heard her voice shake a little when mentioning her parents not being there. This must be a day that would shine a light on the fact that they are no longer here with her. To be honest, I never really thought much about it, I confess. So what if it isn't unrealistic to be married by Friday, she asks, with a smirk. You want to elope? I question, surprised. Not exactly. Lef and my friends will be here on Friday. Maybe we can ask them to come tomorrow. Maybe just our family and close friends. We can get married at the courthouse, but just the important people there with us. I would hate your parents to be upset, or anyone we care about, for that matter, she explains. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to marry you tomorrow, but are you sure this is what you want? I verify. I don't want her to be disappointed. This would actually be perfect. I'm not so concerned about the wedding. The marriage is what matters, and we're basically married already. We wear each other's marks. This is just so we share the last name, she explains. I'm delighted at the thought of her actually becoming my wife tomorrow. It might be stupid that I need to claim her in every way possible, but I'm an alpha. I can't help it, I'm possessive. I love her, and I want everyone to know that she is mine. Only mine. Well, there will be no courthouse wedding. Leave it to me. I'll get something together. You just need to get yourself a dress. I have a few white summer dresses already, she beams. No, you need something new, and not a summer dress. Get a wedding dress. We should get up. It's 2.30. I'll need to make some calls if this is going to happen tomorrow, I smile. I pull her into me and bring her lips to mine. I kiss her slowly, and I hope she can feel the love and excitement I'm feeling. When we break apart, I hold her close for a minute, you've made me so happy. Thank you for saying yes. I promise that you'll never doubt my love for you, I whisper, as I pepper little kisses on her. Thank you for asking. I love you, and I always will, she responds. We walk back home, instead of running in our wolf form. We discuss who will invite. I let her know she just needs to get her and Molly a dress and maybe call Lef and her friends and tell them to be here tomorrow instead of Friday. I'll take care of the rest. I head straight to my office at the pack house. 
I don't want Lexi to hear all the calls I'm going to make. I want to pull off something special. Ring ring Gemma, hello, Jack. Me, hi, Gemma. Gemma, how did the proposal go? Me, it went perfectly. Thank you so much for helping me set it up. It went even better than I had originally imagined. She loved it. Gemma, I am so pleased to hear it. I take it you're an engaged man, now? Me, yes. I am. Now it's time to plan the wedding. Brace yourself, we decided we want to get married, tomorrow. Gemma, what? Are you eloping? Me, no. That's actually why I'm calling. I was hoping you could work your magic and set something set up by the lake on my property. She's a human, so she doesn't realize it's the pack land and not my personal property Gemma, you gave me a week to set up the engagement, and now you want me to pull the wedding off in one day? She questions, in disbelief. Me, yes. Sorry. Can you do it? It's for, I think, 18 people. I don't care what it costs. Gemma, those are dangerous words, my friend. What do you want? Me, I was thinking a ceremony by the lake as the sun is setting, and then a tented area with lights, and decorated really nicely for dinner. Wedding cake. Wedding at 7 to 7.30 and then dinner. Wrapped up by 9.30. We can't do the whole party thing because we have a huge event that requires us to be sharp the next day. Gemma, and when you say that you want it nicely decorated, you're talking top-notch, am I right? Me, exactly. Gemma, it's just not possible to give you what you're asking for in that time frame. It's starting from scratch, and there is no way I can give you what you want, to the caliber you're looking for. Not to mention, when I put my name on something, I want it to represent the level of attention to detail my team and I have. Hmm. There is this place I know about though. It's in the city, so it's not the nature feel that you were thinking of but if I can book it, I can make it gorgeous. It's the rooftop to this 50-story building. The max capacity is, I think, 40 to 50, so it could work. The rooftop has this high pergola with twinkling lights and there is lots of greenery. Tomorrow is a Thursday, so I might be able to get it on short notice. This place is so beautiful already, that my team can really make it exquisite in a very short amount of time. I could totally make something work. Me, that sounds great. I'm happy with that. I just want it to be something that she looks back on and be happy with. I don't want her to regret the quick wedding. Gemma, well, for a small wedding, I think I can make this look incredible. Why don't I give them a quick call, and see if they're available? Me, perfect. Thank you. I'm sitting waiting very impatiently. I don't know how I'll figure this out if Gemma can't help me. I could maybe figure out a way to make our backyard work. After ten very stressful minutes, Gemma calls back. Me, how did it go? Gemma, hey. So it's yours. Me, thank Mu. Thank you. She's a human. That was close. Thank you so much. Gemma, you're welcome. I don't know if you'll be thanking me when you get the bill in. Let's get to it, so flowers. Me, I'll leave you with all those decisions. I trust your vision. You're better at this than I am. Gemma, okay, I can take care of everything. You just need to get yourselves there. Me, everything? You'll take care of the photographer? Cake? An efficient. I thought I would have to do that stuff Gemma, I have enough contacts. I can take care of this much quicker. I know who's best too. 
I'll have my entire staff abandon all projects for a day, to take care of this. 7 p.m., rooftop of 3755, Front Street. Me, thank you so much. Gemma, wait until you see the bill before you thank me. She chuckles. Me, the best is never cheap, and this is no small feat. I mind Link Zack and Kyle, come to my office in the pack house hey guys, so I have something that is top secret news. Lexi and I are getting married tomorrow. They weren't expecting that because they look shocked. Wow. Congratulations. Zack says, and he comes to shake my hand. Kyle follows suit and says the same. That's great news. Why are you guys getting married so quickly? Kyle asks. Because he's an alpha, and he's possessive. Zack smiles. I roll my eyes, but don't bother arguing. You two are perfect for each other, I'm just busting your balls, dude, Zack chuckles. So where are you getting married on such short notice? The courthouse. Kyle asks curiously. I rented a rooftop in the city, and I have a party planner working on it. Lex doesn't know where we are getting married or the details, and I want to keep it that way. She had the same thing in mind as you, Kyle. A courthouse wedding, with our family and close friends. She deserves better than that. I don't want the pack to know that we're getting married either because Elle wouldn't be able to pull off a wedding for 1,400 pack members in one day. The pack will find out we're married at the Luna ceremony. You are both invited, obviously. That's awesome. What can we do to help? Zack presses. If you could look at my schedule and cancel anything I have this afternoon and tomorrow, Zack. He nods. I need to go and get a marriage license, and I need to rent some limos. Kyle, can you check with the cleaning staff, and make sure the guest rooms in the pack house are up to snuff and ready, since our guests will be here a day early? Of course. I spent the afternoon running around doing errands for the wedding, and I'm pulling in the driveway just after six. Lexi's SUV is here, so she must be back from dress shopping. I managed to get the marriage license, limo rentals, and I met up with Gemma on the rooftop. She hasn't started much decorating yet, but it's beautiful on its own. I feel at ease about the wedding now. The weather is supposed to be great all tonight and tomorrow, so Gemma will start decorating tonight. She showed me some pictures of what she's planning on doing, and it's going to be amazing. She's got her staff raiding every flower shop within a 100-mile radius. When I walk into the house, I hear music playing, and a delicious scent invades my nose, and I let out an MMM. My woman is always cooking or baking something, she's good at it. She was right about how home-cooked meals and the togetherness that they bring. They really do help make a house a home. I love my mom and dad but their condo in the pack house never felt like a home like this does. I also live with two people that are always such a source of happiness for me. I've never laughed and smiled so much in my life. I hate going to work, and I love coming home to them. I walk into the kitchen, and Lexi is holding Molly in her arms and they're dancing around. I stop to take in the beautiful sight and admire my woman and our child. You startled me, Levi giggles when she notices me. I smile and make my way to them. Daddy, Molly says, with her arms stretched out. We have gotten close, and I can tell she loves me now. She asks me to kiss her bobos when she gets hurt. She runs to me when I come in, she asks me to play and read to her, and she's always cooking me something with her play food. She's just like her mama. I scoop her up in one arm and pull Lexi in with the other. Standing in our kitchen holding the two most important people in my arms, I feel so grateful. Just weeks ago, 
I was getting ready to go to Jet's Alpha ceremony, thinking I would possibly be giving up on my mate, but on our three-week anniversary, we're getting married. It would sound crazy if we were humans, but we're fated mates. We know we're destined to be together. It's funny how quickly life can change. How did you have time to cook? Did you get a wedding dress today? I arch a brow in question. I just got back about half an hour ago. I just took a lasagna and peach cobbler that I had pre-made last week and popped them in. I did get a wedding dress, she smiles wide. Do you love it? I ask and she continues smiling and nods. Is it an actual wedding dress or a casual dress? Yes, it's a wedding dress. It's not the big princess type dress, but it's me, and I love it, she gushes. I'm glad. I want you to love it. So where are we getting married? She asks while giving my waist a shake like she's so excited she can't contain herself. You'll soon find out, I tease and steal a kiss. Oh, by the way, I haven't told my parents yet. We should go and visit them after dinner, I win see. Oh no. I was hoping you'd break it to them. Well, why don't you call them and invite them over for dinner if they haven't eaten? Maybe we can butter them up with food first. You know I always make lots, she offers. I'll give them a call and see. After I call, I walk back into the kitchen and Molly and Lexi are making a salad together. I am a big help you, Daddy, Molly boasts. You're such a big helper. You're such a nice girl to help Mommy make dinner. I'm so proud of you. She's smiling so proudly. I love the way she so innocently shows how much she loves a compliment. She's so sweet. So? What did they say? Lex interrupts my thoughts. Oh, yeah they're coming. My mom was reheating leftover takeout in the microwave, and my dad chucked it as soon as I invited him, I laugh as I tell her. My parents have eaten over a few times in the last few weeks, and they love Lexi's cooking. Just as I'm finished setting the table, I hear a knock at the door, and then I see my parents let themselves in. Hi, guys. I holler out. Gramps and Gran are here, Molly. I tell her. She runs out, and Gramps is ready to pick her up and give her a big squeeze. Both of my parents love Molly and Lexi too. My dad has it really bad for Molly though. He's always sneaking her treats, and I guess we're not supposed to notice, but Molly's always so excited she tells us in front of him. I just roll my eyes at him when he asks what. Then he raises his arms like he has no idea what's going on. Lexi loves it though, so in turn, I love it. If it makes my woman smile and laugh, I'll never complain. My parents make their way into the kitchen. It smells so good. What's cooking? My dad inquires. Lasagna, garlic bread and peach cobbler for dessert. Lexi answers and my dad lets out a pleased groan. Dinner will be ready in 20 minutes. Why don't we grab a drink and sit outside? Lexi offers. I grab my mom and Lex some wine, and a beer for my dad and me. We're all sitting out back, while Molly jumps on her trampoline. I was right, she totally loves it. Dad win. So Lexi clearly isn't pregnant. She's drinking wine. What did you want to tell us? My mom asks. And we're trying to play it cool. Lexi mind links me, to tell them. I proposed to Lexi this afternoon, I start. My parents are full of excitement, and so are we. My parents congratulate us, and Lexi is showing off her ring to my mom. After a few minutes of chatting, Lexi tells my parents about our romantic picnic in the forest. Well, the first part of it, anyway. My dad asks, so have you set a date yet? 
I mind Link, Lexi, your turn now. You tell them, she smiles, and rolls her eyes playfully at me, we have. Brace yourself. Tomorrow. She gets out, and my parents are looking at us wide-eyed, in shock. Where? Mom asks. I have no idea, Lexi answers, and we both start laughing. My parents are not though. Mom is especially looking at us with concern. You don't know. My dad repeats. She doesn't know. I know. I'm taking care of the wedding stuff. She just had to get her and Molly a dress, I explain. So are you eloping or are we invited? My dad wonders aloud. You're definitely invited. That's why we called you over, Lexi answers. She deserves a proper wedding, my mom half-heartedly scolds me. The wedding isn't important anyway. It's about the marriage, Lexi states in my defense, as she reaches for my hand, but she doesn't know that I don't need defending. I give her hand a squeeze, and kiss her knuckles. Just trust that we know what's best for us, I insist. The rest of the night was filled with great food, and after the shock wore off, we all had a nice evening together. I'll clean up babe, if you want to get Molly to bed. It's getting late, I offer. Thanks, love, she says as she hoists herself to sit on the counter. Come see me first, I'm so tired, but I miss you, she coos. Even though we've been together for the last few hours, I know exactly what she means. I smile as I make my way over. I stand in between her legs and she pulls in. She wraps her legs around my waist to pull me even closer. I sigh in relief. Her smell, her touch, and even more than that, just the way she loves me soothes my soul. MMM, I hear leave her lips. What is it, baby? I whisper. I just needed this. You feel and smell so good all the time, she admits and continues to hold me. I love you, sweetheart, I say quietly. Lex loosens her hold, to look at me. I love you so much, Jack. She looks at me with tenderness, and slowly I bring my lips to her. I kiss her soft and slow, and just as my tongue moves past her lips, we're interrupted. Daddy, up, I hear Molly say, and I feel her at my leg. I smile as I pull away. Family hug time. I announce as I pick her up, and we all hug together. MMMM, Molly says, signaling she wants a kiss. Let's each get a cheek, Mum, I say to Lexi, and we each squeeze a kiss into each side of her cheeks, and Molly's sweet laughter fills the room. I should get this little lady to bed. Give Daddy a hug good night. Molly gives me a squeeze, love you, little bunny. Sweet dreams, I tell her, and kiss her for it. Chapter 30 I wake up, and Lexi is still sleeping beside me. The clock says 6.57 a.m. I never slept this late before Lex came along, but it's like everything about her calms me. I pull her closer to me and snuggle in from behind her. She stirs a little but doesn't wake up. I hold her close, and just take advantage of this moment. It seems like our lives are so busy, I don't get as much time like this as I'd like. I feel like I'm always craving her. Today is the big day. I can't believe how quickly my life has changed, and how drastically. I hear Molly talking, and the clock says 7.18. I get up and slip some track pants and a t-shirt on. I turn off the monitor on Lexi's end table so we don't wake her up. When I open Molly's door, her face lights up when she sees me, Daddy. It puts a smile on my face every time I hear her call me Daddy. Good morning, little bunny. Did you sleep well? I ask. She nods, 
and then stands up and gets to the edge of the bed with her arms open, waiting for me to grab her. When I get close enough, jump. I encourage her, and she jumps off the bed and into my arms. Her little laugh fills the room. Sunshine. She reminds me. I hold her close and sing You Are My Sunshine to her. I change her diaper and get her all dressed, and then we head downstairs. Do you want some bacon and eggs, Molly? Grin cheese, peas, she smiles. She is so cute. You had to use the please, didn't you? Daddy doesn't know how to make that, but I'll try, I explain. I grab my phone and Google it. I found a recipe and looked at the comments, and it was basically all snarky comments about who doesn't know how to make a grilled cheese. It does look pretty simple. Pro tip, low and slow, it says. Okay. Once I have a few cooking, I get some watermelon out for Molly to eat and her sippy cup of milk. Lexi was saying how tired she was last night, so I'll let her sleep. I've got a grilled cheese prepped, and wrapped, so it will just take a few minutes for me to cook it when she comes down. I get a bowl of mixed fruit put aside for her as well. After Molly and I are done, we go to the backyard. I get some clean water in Molly's water table for her, and then sit and answer some work emails. I also had some progress pictures sent from Gemma. They look amazing so far. I'm so excited to surprise Lexi. Boobow's daddy, peace. Molly's at my knee trying to crawl up. You want bubbles? Boobows. And I can't help but chuckle at her excitement. Let's go to the shed and get your bubble machine. I carry her over and we find the bubble machine. I set it up for her, and sit and watch her chase bubbles excitedly around the yard. I love how the smallest thing can bring such joy to a child. I hear the back door open and Lexi comes out wearing one of my t-shirts, and some shorts barely peeking out from my shirt. Her hair is a little messy than it usually is, but she looks cute. Hey! You didn't wake me. It's 9.30, she gapes. I chuckle and motion her to come over and sit on my lap. You were so tired last night, I figured you could use the extra sleep. She sits sideways on me, with her legs hanging over the arm of the chair. How long have you guys been up? She asks. Molly woke up around 7.30. I hold her clothes and place kisses on her neck and cheek. If I had my way, I would spend far more time kissing her and her body. I'm not sure if she even notices she does this, but she leans into me, and my kisses and I love it. It was so quiet in the house when I woke up, I was wondering what was going on. Thank you for letting me sleep in. That was very sweet of you, she says and then nestles her face into my neck. You don't need to thank me for waking up with our girl, I remind her. I'm grateful though, so I'll say thank you when I want to, she adds with a smile, and give me a kiss. Mama. I'll let you girls get your cuddle in, and I'll get you breakfast, and a coffee. You don't have to do that, I'll get something in a bit. I want to, I give her a kiss, and stand up, still holding Lexi in my arms. I sit her in the chair I was sitting in, you look hot in my shirt, by the way, I add before I head inside. After breakfast, Lexi and I lay on the couch together and we put Paw Patrol on for Molly, and she plays with her toys while she watches it. Your family is going to be here in a few hours, we should go and pick up the wedding bands. We don't have time to lie on the couch, I remind her shhh. She says, and then she kisses me. No other woman would be procrastinating ring shopping on their wedding day so they can make out on the couch in their PJs. I really like you, she states while smiling at me. Like? How about love? 
I question. Well, of course. I love you, so much, it's ridiculous, but liking is sweeter than loving sometimes, especially as the years go by. You can love someone and dislike them. I understand what she's getting at. Liking the person that you love doesn't always go hand in hand. She pauses, and I see her smile, and her eyes look a little glossy. My parents would always tell each other that they loved each other, but when one of them would say they liked the other, they would light up. It was like the ultimate compliment. They really liked each other a lot too, she chuckles. They were grossing Lef and I out all the time, making out on the couch, and flirting with each other non-stop. You'd never think that they had been together 22 years, she chuckles. I guess that explains why you're so affectionate, I point out. Am I? Yeah. You don't care who's around, it doesn't stop you from holding me, kissing me, looking at me like you're totally in love with me. I love it. You kiss me in front of Molly too, which I didn't know if you would, but you did right away. It makes sense that you grew up with affectionate parents. Mine were not. You've seen them, they talk nicely to each other, and I don't think I ever remember them arguing, but they are not the type to show affection in front of anyone. I've maybe seen them hug a handful of times, and maybe a quick peck on occasion. I admit. Well, I wouldn't have kissed you in front of Mole if you were a rando. I guess I didn't realize that their relationship affected how I am as a mate. You know, it grossed us out growing up, but if I'm being totally honest, part of me liked it. Our house always felt so safe and full of love, she smiles. I wish I could have met them, I confess. Ugh, me too. They would have. Liked you, she smiles, at her use of like instead of love. Well, d. Everyone likes me. I joke. Hey, you're just as affectionate as I am, she points out. Yeah, I'm a possessive alpha. I want everyone to know you're mine. I admit, but she raises an eyebrow. Your dad's an alpha, and you're affectionate in front of everyone. Don't blame this on possessiveness. Maybe you just, like me, she beams, and I find myself laughing. I do like you. I'm in like with you, I gush. She nods and smiles as she pulls me into a kiss. I want to lie here and just kiss and hold her all day. I love every minute with her, but I know we're on a timeline. Okay, let's go get ready, or we won't have rings to wear, I remind her. She whines, but finally hears my plea and we get ready. We finally made it to the jewelry store, and we picked out some wedding bands. Lexi has tiny fingers, so hers needed to be sized smaller. We paid a hefty rush fee, and they said they could have it done in 90 minutes for us, so the three of us went to lunch while we waited in town. It was 2.30 when we finally made it back home. Molly fell asleep on the way back home, so I put her in her bed. When I came downstairs, Lexi's friends and Lef were pulling in. Lexi's point of view they're here, I squeal and Jack laughs. I run outside and eagerly hug everyone. I missed them so much. After getting reacquainted with everyone, I invite them inside. Everyone was complimenting our home. Why don't we get a drink, and go in the backyard, so we don't wake Molly, I suggest. Sometimes we can get loud. Jack and I get everyone something to drink and we sit out back. It's such a beautiful day. Jack pulled my chair as close as he could to his, so he could rest a hand on my leg. He always wants me close, and he always has to be touching me, which I love. Look at this, it's a perfect oasis, Grace says. It's Molly's happy place these days. Jack got it all set up right away when we got here with the sandbox and everything. 
She loves it back here, I admit, and give Jack an appreciative smile. So how is the transition? Lef asks. It's been great. She doesn't seem to have had a difficult time. What do you think babe? Jack asks. Yeah, it's like this is how we've always lived. She loves Jack, and it has been a really smooth transition. It definitely helped that Jack went above and beyond to welcome her. He had a dream bedroom done up for her. You'll have to see it after. It's so beautiful and she loves it, and then she has this backyard with all this fun stuff. So she's been living her best life, I chuckle and rub his hand that's still on my leg. Ah that's sweet, Cora says. Jack's the sweetest, I gush. Everyone rolls their eyes except Jack. He just smiles, and leans over and gives me a little kiss. I like you, he says, and I smile so broadly. I like you too. I giggle. Shouldn't we be at love if you two are getting married? Joss asks. Liking is better than love sometimes, Lef responds, and smiles. I actually forgot about that until now, he admits. We hang outside, and after an hour Molly wakes up and I run up to grab her. She didn't sleep long, so I hope she's not cranky. I sing her song to her, and she's extra snuggly and cranky. I know everyone is going to be excited to see her, so it kinda sucks. I head outside, and everyone's saying hi to her, and she just ignores them. She didn't get much sleep, so she's kinda cranky, I warn them. Daddy, she whines, and her arms open up to Jack. Come here, little bunny, he says. He grabs her and holds her close. She relaxes in his arms, resting her head on his chest while he rubs her back. I wanted this so badly for her, and I'm so happy she has it. She feels safe and comforted in his arms like she can with no one else. I take my eyes off of the beautiful sight of my child and my mate, and I notice all of my friends, and Lef are wide-eyed staring at them. What? I ask. Nothing. It's just weird to see, Lef answers. It's great, but it's just surprising to see it happen so fast. They look like father and daughter, he says with surprise. We are, Jack rebuts gently. It's really sweet, I'm really happy for you all. Molly deserved a dad, and it makes me so happy that she has a really good one now, Grace smiles. Thank you, Grace. Jack smiles. At four, Jack had a pack member come and show all of my family and friends their guest suites in the pack house so they can get settled and then come back over to get ready with us at 4.30. I have hair and makeup ladies showing up, and Jack had ordered a huge spread of food for everyone to snack on to tide us over, meats, cheeses, crackers, fruit, nuts, brie, veggies and dip were perfect to pick it. The ladies tried to insist that Jack not see me once we start to get ready, but I paid no attention. I wasn't staying away from him for hours. I could see the relief on his face when I refused their suggestion. I don't think he liked the idea of it either. All day, I've wanted to just spend time with him, and enjoy this day. Part of the perk of doing a small no-fuss wedding is that we could enjoy the day together not be apart and stressed. The girls make the guys get ready downstairs, though. They insisted Jack didn't witness me get ready and instead see the end product. I had a shower while my ladies started to get their hair and makeup done. I made sure everything was perfectly manicured, and I was ready for my wedding night. Jack hasn't told me what we're doing, but I'm guessing he found a church for us to get married in instead of a courthouse. Maybe we'll go out to dinner afterwards with everyone. The girls and I are getting ready in our bedroom. Me, Joss, Cora, Grace, and Beska get ready together. 
My cold moon girls seem to get along well with Beska, which is nice. One of the hair stylists works with my natural loose curl, but adds a little more, and then does a half up braid. It looks so wispy and elegant, and she adds some white flowery hair jewelry at the back where the braids come together. It looks beautiful. My makeup is done beautifully, and it's glammed up but still has a natural look to it. At 6 p.m., we're almost all ready. The ladies even had Jack bring Molly up a little earlier so she could get her hair done, just like mine. The ladies are dressed and look amazing. Then finally it's my turn. I pull my dress out of the bag, and I smile just looking at it. It's simple, but I love it and I hope Jack will too. It has thin straps, and it is a V-neckline, but it's not too plunging. It's a form-fitting dress, but it flares out a little below my hips, so it really shows off my curves. It's classy. When I walk out of the bathroom, all of my ladies are excitedly telling me how beautiful I look. Jack is going to die, Beska giggles. We don't have to leave for another half an hour, but I insist, since we're all ready, we go down with the guys and have some champagne before we leave. All the girls start to head down, and I find myself a little nervous all of a sudden. Not to get married, I just hope Jack likes it. Then I hear Grace. Jack, she's coming, brace yourself, she warns. Great, no pressure. I walk down the stairs and Jack's at the bottom of them. He looks so hot in his perfectly tailored black tux. When he sees me, his hand moves to his chest, like he's holding his heart, wow, he mumbles. Jack's smiling like I have never seen him smile before. He stretches out his hand to escort me off the last few stairs and pulls me into a hug. There aren't even words to describe how stunning you look. I'm the luckiest man in the world, he tells me and the love is evident all over his face. Thank you, babe. I'm the lucky one. You look so good in your tux, I whisper to him. He chuckles but shakes his head, and moves in to kiss me. It's very slow and tender but we soon hear people clearing their throats. I honestly forgot they were there. I don't even break the kiss, I use my hand to shoo them towards the kitchen, and I deepen the kiss. If I want to kiss my man, I'm going to especially on my wedding day. After a minute, we break apart. Heads together, we catch our breath and take this moment to just be present with each other. I love you more than I could ever explain, Jack's husky voice cuts through our silence. I know. My love for you is all-consuming and unlike anything I could even begin to describe, I admit. I'm so excited you're going to be my wife, he whispers. I know, and you're going to be my husband, I beam. Jack and I share one more hug before we head into the kitchen. Are we going to be able to make it to the wedding or are you two lovebirds going to have to reschedule because you can't keep your hands off of each other? Jed teases. I won't be embarrassed for loving on my man, I add with a cheeky smile. My friends just smile, and Jack pulls me closer to him. We all enjoy some champagne and hang out together while we wait for the last few of our guests to show up so we can all ride in the limos together. When Jack's Aunt Sue and Cousin Brady walk in, there's an awkwardness, and then before I know it, we hear mate out of Brady's mouth and then Jocelyn's. I can't even help it, I'm jumping about in Jack's arms. I'm so happy. Joss will be moving to Black Moon. Jack's smiling. I know he loves to see me happy. You're getting my top two female warriors, Jet groans to Jack. Jack laughs at the tortured look on Jet's face. Joss and Brady escape to the backyard to get better acquainted, but when Jack's parents show up, we all head out. Jack, Molly and I travel with Beska, Alex, and their little guy because Molly didn't want to be separated from her little friend, Toby. Chapter 31 
We make it into the city, and no one knows where we're going, except Jack and Zack. We pull up to a hotel. Hmm? A hotel? I was expecting a church. Jack leads us inside, and there's a sign at one of the elevators, Lavard Wedding in cursive, and it's decorated with real flowers. I'm starting to get very curious about what awaits us beyond the elevator. Gemma. This is Lexi, Jack says as he introduces me to an African-American woman, with long straight brown hair. She's wearing a black pencil skirt and a pink blouse. She looks very professional, and she's gorgeous. It's nice you meet you, she smiles as she shakes my hand and then hands me a bouquet of white flowers. Everyone can go up except the bride and groom. Jack, you said you wanted to walk down the aisle with her, Gemma asks. Jack nods, as long as that's okay with my bride, he asks, and looks to me. It's not traditional, but I love it. There's no need for anyone to give me away, besides, I'm already Jack's, not to mention my dad isn't here. We wait in the lobby with Gemma as everyone else heads up. So when the doors open, I'll hold them. Stand there until you hear the music start. When the music starts, you can start to walk, Gemma instructs. I nod, and finally, the elevator returns, and we head up. When the door opens, I am frozen in shock. We're on the rooftop, and it looks like it's out of a bridal magazine. There is a giant pergola, and it's 10 to 12 feet high, with white fabric draped elegantly with twinkly lights, and there are white flowers all over it, and everywhere really. There's greenery surrounding the outskirts of the rooftop, making it feel very elegant and warm. There is a large square table on one side that's decorated with flowers, and beautiful linen. Off to the other side is a white fabric aisle that leads to a large arbor covered in flowers and greenery, with chairs on each side of the aisle, that our friends and family are sitting in. The music starts and it pulls me out of my thoughts. I notice my hand is on my mouth. I don't move. How did you do this? I ask Jack, and he smiles. You like it. It's beautiful. I just wasn't expecting this. How? I ask, confused. Jack chuckles as he starts to walk, guiding me with him. I wanted you to have something you could look back on and remember without regret. Jem helped me with the engagement, and I asked her if she could do our wedding too. In one day. I ask as we keep walking. Some people thrive under pressure, he adds. Thrive under pressure? More like under a wad of cash. This must have cost a fortune. You didn't have to do this. I wouldn't have regretted marrying you by an Elvis impersonator, I assure him. I know, and that just makes me want to make this even more special for you. You deserve the absolute best, he adds. I already have it. I have you. I say as we make it to the altar. I love you. He mouths. I love you too, I mouth back. We exchanged vows, and it's beautiful and intimate, and he couldn't have made this more special. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Jack wraps his strong arms around me, and mine find his neck. The second our lips touch, our little group is cheering for us. Just the Way You Are, by Bruno Mars, starts playing and when we break apart, everyone is standing clapping, and waiters are coming out with champagne for everyone. The music plays and people dance and drink while the photographer takes us aside for 15 minutes to get a few pictures of us. As long as I have two or three good ones, I'm beyond happy. We get some with Molly, and then with everyone too. When we're done, speechless by Dan and Shay. Come on and Jack pulls me in to dance. This song is on one of my playlists and every time it comes on, Jack grabs me and dances around the kitchen with me. 
did you tell them to play this song? I furrow my brow. Of course, this is our song. We spend the song wrapped up in each other's arms. Completely oblivious to anyone else around us. The way he looked into my eyes, and held me. I could feel the love between us. It was intimate and so beautiful. We shared kisses and sweet whispers to each other, and I loved every second of it. When the song started, everyone was dancing, but when the song ended, we noticed no one was dancing. Everyone was watching us, and clapping now. Awkward. I feel my cheeks turn a nice shade of pink, and I see Jack smile at my embarrassment, as he plants a kiss on my temple. I was so glad to see the waiters coming in with trays of plates because it moved everyone's focus to the food and away from us. We all sit down at the large table, and we're served a tasty salad. Then dinner is served and it's steak with lobster, whipped garlic potatoes, and broccolini. It was delicious. The staff cleared the plates and then brought out a two-tiered wedding cake, with white icing with flowers on it. Everything was beautiful, and I don't know how they managed to do it all on such short notice. When we cut it open, I find that it's vanilla cake with raspberry and buttercream filling. It's delicious. Molly loved the cake, and it came at a good time because she was starting to get cranky. Toby too. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. There's lots of laughing and chatting. The atmosphere's great. Joss and her mate Brady seem to be getting along great, which I am so grateful for. She was so sure that she had lost her mate, but she was wrong. Brady is rated in the top 10 warriors at Black Moon, but just not high enough to be brought to game events, which is why he had never met Joss. He seemed nice every time I have talked to him, and I love the idea of Joss moving here. After dinner, we all sit at the table for about an hour just chatting and enjoying each other's company. When a song comes on that moves someone, they get up to dance, or we all do. It was a great time. At nearly nine, Molly was starting to get cranky again. Want to dance with Daddy? He puts his hands out to her, and she quickly accepts his offer. Jack goes to the DJ, and then the way you look tonight by Frank Sinatra comes on and Jack dances with her, and I can see he's singing to her. He periodically dips her, and she thinks that's so funny. I'm totally fang over him, and I'm so excited about the surprise I have planned for him. I take out my phone and make sure to snap a few pictures of them dancing. Soon after the dance, Molly is getting cranky again. We should get this little bunny home. Jack tells me and I nod. Toby is done for two, Beska adds. We all get ready to leave, and when we get downstairs, Jack is getting ready to escort me into one of the three limos he rented. I grab Molly out of his arms, say good night to Daddy, Molly. What are you doing? Jack furrows his brows. Good night Daddy. She yawns. You're not the only one who can plan a surprise, I smirk and walk to left to hand her over to him, and say good night to her. Have you taken care of our bag, Zack? I ask. Yup. Thank you. Jack's looking at me like WTF. Let's say goodbye to everyone, I tell Jack. I asked Lef yesterday if he would stay at our place tonight, and watch Molly for the night. I rented a suite at the nicest hotel in the city, and I got some super lingerie yesterday. The room will be set up for us with champagne, chocolate-covered strawberries, and other goodies. It has a two-person tub, and a king-sized bed in a huge suite. I packed us a bag earlier and asked Zach to get a fourth limo for us for when we leave. This is ours, I point to another limo. A man is standing outside of the car, waiting to get the door for us. Mr. and Mrs. Lavard. Yes. I gush excitedly, at the use of my new last name. 
Jack chuckles and steals a quick kiss before helping me in. We enjoy a glass of champagne and some steamy kisses in the ten-minute drive to our hotel. Jack's point of view when we get into our suite, it's huge. I wasn't expecting this at all, but I'm honestly really excited about having this alone time with my wife. My wife? That's crazy. This is perfect though. We can sleep in as late as we want, or not sleep. This was sweet of you, I hum into her shoulder as we explore our suite. It's our wedding night, we should be able to stay up as late as we want, and wake up whenever we want, and consummate our marriage as much as we want without mommy and daddy duty, she says and leans in to kiss me. MMM, I like the way that sounds. There's champagne and desserts in the living area. Lexi grabs the bottle and hands it to me. I open it up, while she grabs the glasses. I fill them and then we head to the bedroom. The bed is covered in rose petals. This is nice, I say as my eyes trail down my beautiful wife and her gorgeous body. When she turns around, she sees my hungry eyes, and suddenly the tension is thick. That's all it takes. A look, a small sway of her or even just a moment alone with her and suddenly I feel like an animal, and I want to ravage her. I put my champagne down and take off my jacket and start pulling at my tie. I undo my top few buttons all while not breaking eye contact. I see her chest rising and falling harder. I'm going to get changed, unzip me, she says and she flashes me a mischievous smile. Oh, my pleasure. I unzip her, and she lets the dress fall to the ground. She's left in a white lace thong, and a white lace strapless bra that's see-through. Baby, I growl. It's going to get better than this, I promise, she smirks and turns to the bag and she escapes to the bathroom with it. I don't know how much better it could get than that but I'm willing to wait a minute to find out. I walk out onto the balcony to get some air. We're on the top floor, and even though I prefer living out of the city, there is definitely an energy and beauty in the way the city sparkles at night. Or maybe I'm just on a high from marrying my woman. I feel Lexi's hand wrap around my waist, and I turn around to see what she's wearing, making sure she isn't exposing too much. She's wearing a black silky robe. I pick her up, and she wraps her legs around my waist, with a giggle. She has her arms around my neck and she's smiling so broadly as I carry her inside. The one thing I don't want to forget about our wedding or our wedding night, is that smile. She's happy. Really happy, and nothing makes me happier than seeing her happy. Well, maybe one thing. Nothing makes me happier than making her, but I'll bet that makes her pretty happy too. I love you, baby. I love you, she whispers, as she smiles into a kiss. I'm starting to remember she assured me that she was changing into something even better than what she was wearing before, which I thought was hard to top. Even though she's got her legs wrapped around my waist, I grab the belt to her robe and pull. I pull away to get a better look. You weren't lying, I growled. She smiles and releases my neck to drop the robe. She's wearing some black lace lingerie, and she looks cute. I take her straight to bed. I want her, and I don't want to wait. I drop her on the bed, and I don't even ease into it. I want her now. She's so wet. You're perfect. And mine, I growl. Yes. You own me. All of me, she huffs, still coming down from her high. MMM, tell me it's mine, I rasp. She looks into my eyes, I am yours. Only yours. I feel like a caveman given how much those words turn me on. I start kissing up her body. I want you now. Then take me, I'm yours, she pants. I'm not going to last if you keep talking like that, I warn her. 
As I move up her body, it feels good. Then she directs me to her. I know she's getting closer, and the thought of contracting on me, has me getting close to my end too. You're going to make me come, I hiss. I know that turns her on too. Jack, she cries out, and just like that I feel her start to contract around me, and then I let myself follow. Lex lays on top of me for a minute while we catch our breath. We stayed up for hours, having each other over and over. I'm not sure if it's because we're both so possessive, and being married turns us on, but we can't seem to get enough. Finally, after I think five rounds, we took a shower together and fell fast asleep. Join our Facebook and WhatsApp group for more updates, link is given in description. Rest audiobook will be continued in next episode.